Hello my soccer universe, my voice is getting better, I'm getting better, so time to do a little review on the action Serie A round 8, just before the international break. And as you may guess, the big story for me is that Milan are on top of the table, thanks to, among other things, Giroud going into goal, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well, but there are other things we can talk about in Serie A too. Most notably, Fiorentina with a really impressive performance in Naples against Na Napoli, now soaring up the table, which is maybe you could see it happening, but not to its, uh, that degree that it is happening at the moment. But again, after eight rounds, it's still very early in the season. There are 30 rounds to go. We also have the two Roman teams up there. And in general, you know, it's kind of bright up there, which meaning we had kind of some significant away wins. Uh, both Roman teams getting a win hasn't happened so often this season. Maybe they're on the up and climbing up the table. Although we hear already that um, if Mourinho would have lost in Cagliari, they might have been let go. Potent he might have been let go potentially. But with Lukaku scoring at a good rate, seemingly Roma are on the up. Another big story uh, is Juventus, and no, not the derby win in one of the most one-sided derbies ever. But we have to talk Pogba. The B sample is now confirmed. I, I don't think I've mentioned it before. Uh, while not playing, he was selected for uh, uh, testing. It turns out he had uh, exaggerated uh, testosterone levels, which is down to a medication that he took while rehabbing in the US, where this uh, medication is not on, on the list. And I honestly, while it is on the banned list in Europe, why, is, why are you not checking the stuff that they're, they're taking? An athlete these days has to be super careful about everything he's putting into his body. body. And I know it has been dark times around Pogba, not only off the, uh, on the pitch because uh, there have been many injuries, but also off the pitch with the extortion and so on. And I think the entire picture is not rosy for him. I completely understand why he could be in a really dark in desperate spot there and this is just the latest point um as i said the b sample turned out now to be paul positive uh as well and now we're looking into a potential ban what i hear is if it can be proven that he took this intentionally it could be up to four years with him being 30 that's probably the career done um more likely i think is a two-year deal and then maybe if he enters a plea bargain this could be reduced to one year it's still it's one year i can very well see juventus rescinding his contract and uh, let's move on from that uh, but uh, there is a huge personal tragedy with paul pogba in there as well i have to say i think he was really instrumental for the uh, great French team that won the World Cup in 2018. He had some great seasons at Juventus. Um, but I also have to say that ever since he left Juventus, outside of the national team, his career was definitely on the turn. But you could always see the glimpses of his greatness. And so I think this is a really, really sad story overall. I hope it will continue and I hope he, we get to see some good Pogba sometime again. But let's go into the results and I'll pick out a few uh, big ones. The first one is, of course, Inter's draw with Bologna. And if you look at last week's video, I said, ah, this is a, uh, a fixture where Inter have won always big. And yes, Bologna do it at home. Now they did it away. And Bologna actually have a really impressive record this uh, season. You know, they got draw at uh, Juve, they drew Napoli at home and, and so on. They have been getting good, 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 good results. So maybe it did not come that much as a surprise. But if you look at how the game went, if the 11th minute uh, Acerbi sc uh, scores uh, through a header, then Lato Mertiz with a wonderful strike, makes it 2-0. And at this moment, you think there's only Inter going to win it. They're going to win it again by a lot. However, then Lautaro Martinez holds back a, a Bologna player in, in the box and Orsolini converts the penalty and the game gets touchy. Zerkzi with a really, really weird shot. I mean, he basically is passing it into the net. I wonder how this could go in. Gets an equalizer and then uh, Inter are again nervy, nervy, nervy as they sometimes want to do. Yes, an Alexis Sanchez goal is disallowed for offside, but in the end, Bologna hold on. And this is a Bologna team. I think we have to watch out Maybe they could challenge for a Conference League spot uh, this season. However, this also opened it up for Milan to take again the lead in the league alone this time. 
uh, which one could not really see after intervening the Derby 5-1. But ever since the Derby, the two teams have gone a little bit opposite ways as well. Speaking of Derby, uh, the Derby del Telemoli already said, uh, no matter what form the teams are in, Juventus is going to win this one. It was an absolute atrocious game, especially in the first half. Then Gatti scores early in the second and Milik adds another header. We have to say Goli Milinko with Savic did also not shower himself in glory. 2-0. That's it. Yes, there was also Cesar Brehan, 100 years of the Anielis taking care of Juventus, which I think is um, worth noting. The big game for me, of course, were, was Genoa Milan, who let's be honest, was for 87 minutes just as boring as the Derby de la Mole. Milan had a few chances early on. Uh, Genoa could settle. The most notable thing happening in, uh, in the first of us, the Hernandez getting his fifth yellow card in his, the eighth round. He's missing now against Juve and I think he really has to get his act took together because there's just too many yellow cards. Um, there were, of course, changes to the line, lineup as well. Uh, Emily you know, Oka for playing, uh, Jovic up, up, up front and so on. Chukwese. He brings on Pulisic and Leo at the half. I guess all right, uh, given what happened then at the time. I didn't really see it coming. But again, it was a very tentative Milan. Uh, Ekic, the biggest chance was a deflected shot that uh, Mike Manuel saved for Genoa. Um, and then... I thought they might just work it out and exactly this in Musa crosses in Pulisic controls it. I still think with his chest I don't think there's enough of his arm there to count for a handball and it's 1-0 Milan and I think yeah we're gonna see this out. However from that moment on the game went into ballistic mode completely in a completely different direction uh, and it all came when uh, again Genoa tries to launch a long ball and Magnon comes out tries to head the ball, but while going up uh, with his knee, more or less flattens the uh, Pushkas, the Genoa uh, striker that had just come on, and there's no relation to Ferenc Pushkas uh, right there. There was no intent there. Intent was there, but when you see the re replay, how he hits with the knee high exactly, in the, uh, it's, it's a really, really rough challenge. That, for sure. And so, unfortunately, he gets out with a red card. And he also will miss at least a UV game. But there's another game coming up right after the Napoli game too. And I think he will be out for that one too. Unfortunately. Then Christian Pulisic wants to go into goal. No, you'll do small. It's Olivier Giroud. And you can see Mignon is arguing his case that uh, he tried to play the ball. He needs to get, get, get up there. I can see his point there. Uh, unfortunately, it probably is a red card. Um, and Giroud go, 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 goes in and you can see. Just give me, give me, give me. Uh, the way he then adjusts the wall like he's... An, and I'm thinking, does he even know what he's doing there? Yes, seemingly he knows. The wall deflects. I think it came, came from... It deflects the free kick then onto the crossbar. Thank you. Uh, then he has to make another save. Uh, with a long ball being played and he gets in there and he hawks the ball. But from, uh, the, I think it was the corner then, we get the other goalkeeper sent off too for a second yellow card. First delay of game and then he trips up and it would have been a clear shot on an empty net. Why is the referee giving the second yellow when he could give a goal for Milan, which would have helped a whole lot more. But I've never seen two goalkeepers being sent, sent off and then Giroud... Finally holds on the ball, is the big winner of the game. Uh, loads of, loads of uh, celebrations. I think it was good. Win for morale. You are top of the table. Uh, you got a crazy win. Giroud is now selling a goalkeeping jerseys for Milan. Milan is listed as a goalkeeper, Salsa suddenly. So it's all good fun and I totally enjoyed it. However, what I do not enjoy is that Mike Manny and Tiana Hernandez are missing at least a Juventus game, but also... Uh, Mike Mania will miss against Napoli and that actually could be a very much a Pyrrhic victory right here. But for now, international break for two weeks, you're sitting top of the table and I'm all here for it. After the third there was at the beginning of the last one, that actually seems the Milan is more solid than I would have expected them to be. Of the Sunday games, we have to talk about the 3-2 of... Um, 
Lazio against At- Atalanta, where Lazio played really well for at least the first half hour. Uh, it was a De Ketelare own goal, yeah. <laughs> Sorry for him. Uh, they gave La Lazio the double the lead. Castellanos a really nice play. Uh, makes it 2-0 in the 11th minute. Uh, Lazio flying high. But then um, Atalanta find themselves back into again. Ederson and e- Equalizer. Uh, and Kolasinac. Uh, no, Ed- Ederson gets the uh, uh, goal back. And then after Kopmanis assists, Kolasinac gets the 2-2. Um, and... It's very much in the balance at, at this point. And Vecino, another brilliant uh, shot, gets the winner. But also Sari gets sent off again. And Sari is at the moment really, really inerved. I hope he can cool down a little bit. Because I think Lazio would definitely need, need him. The other Rome team, as, as I said, I mean, slowly it starts out. Awa, Lukaku scoring two. Belotti scoring as, as well. Yes, it is on a Cagliari. But, you know, Milan just had a very um, tough win there not too long, long ago. Roma go in there and uh, not struggling. I mean, tough, tough, tough win. They were 1-0, nil, nil down in, in the end. It, it was easy. But I thought that this Roma win was probably a little bit more impressive overall. So it's 4-0, 4-1. Cagliari, one has, has to say, it's probably a top relegation candidate at this moment. And then, lastly, Fiorentina... It's a little bit ironic because Italiano probably was by many touted as the top candidate to replace uh, Spalletti at uh, Napoli. Uh, did not work out. Um, Fiorentina kind of quickly signed a con- contract with him. And so they got a really, really good Garcia. But, you know, with this, you see Napoli also premiering their new Halloween jerseys, which makes for a weird look. Although I have to say they don't look that bad. Uh, I wish the, probably the sponsor in front was also light blue that matching the numbers on the back. Then it would look a whole lot more Napoli. However, that game was more about Fiorentina than Na- Napoli. Brecolo giving them already an early lead after they already hit them. Uh, Volt work before. Uh, I know Seaman goal is, uh, is disallowed uh, mid first half, but then uh, Napoli get the equals, which at the time probably was uh, somewhat expected. Uh, to uh, with Osimen this time, starting scoring, it's 1 1. And Rudy Garcia then decided to mirror the system of Fiorentina. That did not work at all. I mean, he takes uh, Anguissa off, he takes Politano off, who was really unhappy unha- unha- with that. And then Giacomo Bon Bon Bonaventura, who is in great form at the moment, he even got called call to, uh, to, to the Italy squad, makes it 2 1 for, uh, for Fiorentina. And honestly, at that point, it seemed like it is only fair to Napoli couldn't really mount anything. And he, with him taking and Zielinski and Osimen also off. I don't know what he's doing. This really this really good here. In the end, Nico Gonzalez makes it 3-1 and Fiorentina get a really, really big win. Fiorentina can hurt a lot of teams, I, I, I would say. And so, in the standings, Milan now top. There's quite a few changes in, in there. We have now Milan Inter Juve, the classic three up top. Fiorentina ahead of Napoli and Atalanta also kind of hovering in there. But you could, you, you could say that uh, Napoli have already a little bit of an uh, uphill battle there. Um, if you look at the bottom, Empoli, Salernitana, Cagliari. At this moment, uh, looks quite lucky. Udine is also not out of the woods for sure. I, I'm a who. Cool. Who is talking out of the of, of the woods? But uh, it's mostly down to five draws at this point. Uh, no team has uh, has the spotless record, so there uh, one loss for each team at the very least. Uh, in the expected standings, yeah, Napoli Na- Na- is still now in third place. It's now Milan just edging into by teeny teeny bit on top, but I think this is very very down. Uh, tight and you know Milan is still a little bit in injury crisis which Inter is not as much as I would like to say I'm all behind Milan I still if on uh, neutral I think Inter is just a tad better there. but let's see where it will go coming back from the international break uh, the big one is Milan Juve and we say I have a little bit trepidation going into that one uh, Napoli at Verona and Inter against Torino have relatively easy uh, matches. Um, I also think that Roma against Monza is uh, probably one is a little bit overlooked and then it ends with a Tuscany derby between Fiorentina and Empoli. So that's it from me from Serie A. Let, let me know what you thought about the last round and how Serie A will be going in general. Taking a little international break. 
give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, I'll talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!